Hello everyone. This is a CJSN podcast and I am Akhil Vair, a postdoctoral fellow at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. With me today is Lily Chan. Hi everyone. I am Lily Chan, assistant professor of nephrology at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Thank you for joining us on this podcast. We're here to talk about a recent paper, automated determination of left ventricular function using electrocardiogram data in patients on maintenance hemodialysis. Lily, Would you like to start with an overview of why we conducted this study? Thanks, Akhil. Well, we know that patients on maintenance hemodialysis have a higher risk of cardiovascular mortality. Additionally, structural anomalies such as increased left ventricular cavity size and decreased left ventricular compliance are common in patients on hemodialysis and will eventually manifest as changes in left ventricular systolic function. Left ventricular ejection fraction, or LVEF, is a primary metric of LV systolic function. LVEF measurements have traditionally been quantified using transthoracic echocardiography. Unfortunately, echocardiography can be logistically challenging to implement given concerns of personnel, time, and cost. In comparison, the electrocardiogram, or the ECG, is a simple and widely available diagnostic modality. It's often the first investigation ordered on hospital presentation and frequently repeated during the course of a patient's hospital stay. However, while some cardiac pathologies can be easily diagnosed by physicians from the ECG, subtle patterns may be missed by inexperienced providers. And this is where machine learning comes in. Machine learning is an umbrella term that describes algorithms capable of adjusting their internal state to learn patterns within complex data. The noteworthy thing about such algorithms is that they don't have to be explicitly directed about what to look for. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning and describes the use of neural networks to understand data. Such neural networks have been applied to all kinds of tasks to do with understanding of ECGs. This includes diagnosis of arrhythmias, myocardial infarctions, and a little more relevant to our topic, prediction of LVF given an ECG. However, such algorithms may not generalize to patients on hemodialysis due to subacute structural cardiac and hemodynamic changes that occur in the setting of dialysis. Training a new algorithm from scratch for patients on hemodialysis is also fraught with challenges because of deep learning's dependency on data in both quantity and quality. In the healthcare setting, this problem is further compounded by relatively small patient populations. Furthermore, deep learning also requires substantially more computational power and runtime than traditional machine learning methods such as tree-based models. The importance of having enough data cannot be overstated. Large enough neural networks can simply memorize data in limited quantities. This condition is called overfitting and results in poor performance when the models are shown previously unseen data. Fortunately, the data problem can be alleviated using transfer learning, a technique that leverages the expertise of a trained neural network at one task and utilizes it for an adjacent downstream task. In this approach, a neural network is first trained on data points and labels which are similar to the downstream task of interest. This is a process described as pre-training. After this, the neural network is shown actual data points and labels which correspond to the downstream task. This is called fine-tuning. Overall, the whole process reduces the amount of data required as well as the compute power and time needed to get a good performant model. We started with ECGs for all patients who are admitted to any of the five Mount Sinai facilities in New York. Using procedure and ICD codes, we identified patients who received hemodialysis and transthoracic echocardiograms. We paired LVEF values extracted from these echocardiograms to ECGs for these patients performed within seven days. Following this, we applied signal filters to the ECG recordings to reduce the amount of noise and also correct for artifacts such as baseline drifts. The ECG was then plotted to an image, and additional tabular data were extracted in the form of patient age, sex, the PR and QDC intervals, as well as atrial and ventricular rates. We then developed a combination architecture consisting of a convolutional neural network backbone for the imaging data and a multilayer perceptron for the tabular data. Within this architecture, we trained four models, each with a different starting point, including a model pre-trained on ECGs from non-dialysis patients. Finally, all models were tested on a separate test of hemodialysis patients kept as a holdout. The task was operationalized as three binary classification problems, each directed towards prediction of an LVEF of either less than 40%, between 40 and 50%, and greater than 50%. Performance was evaluated using area under the receiver operating characteristics curve. Values can range from 0.5 as the lowest to 1 as the highest. 
we found that the ECG transfer learning model consistently outperformed all other models for each category of LBEF. In contrast, a model trained from scratch, as well as a model with an ImageNet transfer learning baseline, had values in the low 0.7 range for LVF less than 40 and greater than 50. This dropped close to 0.5 for LVF in the 40 to 50 percent range. The model trained on non-hemodialysis patients fared better for either of the less than 40 and greater than 50 percent categories, but once again, performance plummeted to around 0.5 for the 40 to 50 percent range. Further, a Cox proportional hazards model showed that the ECG transfer learning model's predictions of a low LVEF were indicative of a higher five-year mortality. Given the high prevalence of cardiovascular disease in patients on hemodialysis and its association with morbidity and mortality, early identification of patients with low LVEF could facilitate close monitoring and institution of disease-modifying treatments. Traditional approaches for evaluation of LV systolic function tend to be time and labor-intensive, while routine ECGs may streamline patient care and enable earlier determination of better management pathways for patients on hemodialysis. Thank you for joining us. This is Akhil, and this has been a CJSM podcast. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified health care provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast from the American Society of Nephrology.